What's up everybody? Last week we talked about two really important articulators, which are the jaw and the tongue. This week we're gonna look at two others, which are the lips and the soft palate. Remember that the shape of the mouth is one of the most important things that makes a sound resonant, and the lips are an extension of the mouth. We round the lips in order to say vowels like O and U, and we spread the lips wider in order to say vowels like E and A. In general, the lips should have this sort of slight smile most of the time. This is true both in pop and musical theater styles as well as classical styles. Now, the smile is usually gonna be a little bit bigger in more pop and contemporary styles. The smile is such a characteristic feature of belting that people have coined it the belter's bite. So the lips are sort of always in this position, almost like you were biting down in an apple, but it should still be there at least a little bit in most classical singing. This helps prevent the sound from getting too muffled and really allows a focus and clarity to come to the sound. That being said, if the lips are too wide and specifically they get kind of rigid or tight, then the sound can become too bright and too harsh sounding. Remember, we need a balance between that bright clarity, some of which can come from that kind of smile in the lips, but we don't wanna overdo it so that we lose the beauty of the sound and it becomes too strident. So a great and easy exercise for loosening up the lips are lip trills. <laughs> You can take this all the way up or down. Lip trills are great for so many elements of technique, but as the name might imply, they are especially good for loosening up the lips. As I mentioned, the shape of the lips is very closely related to this concept of resonance because it changes the shape of the mouth. So an exercise that's really good for sort of calibrating the different shapes of the lips and the mouth in order to create a resonant sound is to alternate between different vowel sounds like this. During this exercise, you want to allow the lips as well as the tongue and the jaw to freely change shape, very relaxed, and see if you can line everything up in that consistent mask, buzzy feeling. Another great thing to do is to practice songs on vowels first. So you take all the consonants out of every word that you're singing in whatever piece you're practicing, and you only sing on the vowels. Because once you're able to get the mouth and the throat to line up in that sort of optimal space, then you'll find that putting the consonants on comes very naturally and everything flows easily. Let's talk about the soft palate. Put your tongue on the roof of your mouth you'll feel a bone that's sort of part of your upper jaw structure. Now slide your tongue back towards the back of your mouth and you'll notice that at some point you hit an area of softer tissue. This is your soft palate. On this diagram, you can see where the hard palate and the soft palate connect. The soft palate is a muscular flap that connects to the hard palate, which you can see here. And it's connected to the uvula, which is that ball of muscle and tissue that you can see hanging in the back of your throat. The function of the soft palate is to actually block off this nasal passage right here. This is important for when we yawn, swallow, sneeze. You may have experienced when you're drinking something and you start laughing and the soft palate fails to do its job and block off the nasal passage and that liquid comes out of your nose. When we're singing, if the soft palate isn't in this slightly raised position, sometimes the sound can end up coming out of our nose and it's got this nasal quality. And so generally in most types of singing, we want the soft palate to lift very gently upon inhalation. We've actually experienced this before in another exercise. If you think back to the huh, aha exercise that we've been doing, the huh is meant to release the jaw, the tongue, and all the structures here. But that surprise breath, aha, is really meant to help that soft palate into the raised position. The most important thing about this idea is that it feels natural and relaxed. Try not to get too throat focused because we can end up scrunching those muscles in the back. When we get too in our heads thinking about raising the soft palate, sometimes we can end up manipulating the muscles and things get a little bit too forced. We want everything to feel super, super easy back there. So this idea of the gentle lift upon inhalation, is very connected to that sort of surprise breath or enthusiastic breath. But beyond that, be careful not to get too focused on actively lifting anything. A lot of people have success finding that gentle soft palate lift through this idea of the inner smile. The idea is basically to smile big and feel that 
gentle broad stretch kind of in that space between the molars and then when you relax your lips you simply maintain that feeling now again it's important not to try to overdo this but i suppose this idea could be most closely related to the smiles smiling with your eyes you keep an inner smile even when you're not always smiling let's do this we're going to sing e e we're going to do it twice the first time we're going to smile really really big you'll notice that the tone of this is going to be very very bright and brassy the second time you're going to try to relax the lips a little bit but maintain that sense of inner smile here we go now do it again with more relaxed lips but maintain the inner smile hopefully you noticed that there was still focus in the sound but it wasn't quite so brassy and bright so with the lips and the soft palate we're looking basically for a combination of that inner smile as well as a slight outer smile but one that's very relaxed and doesn't have too much tightening or rigidity in the lips. So now let's put everything together with regard to our articulators. We've got the tongue which should rest just behind the bottom front teeth, basically on that ridge on your gums. And in most cases we don't want the back of the tongue to be pulling up or pushing down. Remember that those tongue muscles are connected both to your jaw and to the top of the larynx where your vocal folds are. The jaw swings down and maybe a little bit slightly back. And remember that we've got this idea of that line dividing our face in half. And so we speak in the front, but we also make space in the back. And so we need to have this idea of dropping both the front and the back of our jaw. The lips should remain very flexible and have sort of a little bit of a smile like shape. The soft palate should lift very gently and very naturally upon inhalation. This is your inner smile and we want to see if we can maintain this the whole time while singing. It takes a lot of time, practice and experimentation, but hopefully these ideas will help you on your journey in helping you to find the most beautiful and natural feeling sound in your own voice. Nobody else can sing like you. Until next time, see you later.